Hi, welcome to the Tired Gardener channel. In this film, I'm going to show you how to grow really quick and easy and cheap salads on your windowsills. Normally, I make these films for people with energy limiting conditions such as chronic fatigue, or ME, fibromyalgia. But as I film this, we are now in our fifth week of lockdown in the UK. And I'm aware that everybody um, is finding it more difficult to access food and particularly fresh greens. And this is a big issue if you have a chronic illness. However, the longer that we go on, the more difficult it becomes to stay healthy if what we're living on is carbohydrates and easily stored dried and tin foods. Um, also, it's likely to get more difficult to access fresh greens in the UK as we go on. So, so much of our food has to be brought in from overseas. So, all you need for this today is a very commonly available mushy peas, which I think these are showing in the film with the letter in back to front. Anyway, these are quite a common sight in your supermarket and in corner stores. These are bigger dried peas. Essentially, they're the ones that you would put in stews or that we use to make mushy peas for eating with fish and chips. They are less than a pound for a packet. You can buy pea shoot salads in the supermarket when they're available. And they're usually more than that. You would only have one serving before they usually wilt and turn into compost. So for the less than the price of one packet of fresh pea shoots from the supermarket, you can get a month's supply. If you buy a big packet, this one, which I the rest of the supermarket, these are described as green mutter, but it's the same thing, narrow crack peas. Really cheap way of doing it. So once you have your, your pea seeds, you need a container to grow them in. And this can be the traditional flower pot like this, um, or a slightly smaller one. If you don't have pots, um, or if you do have a garden you want to grow outside, you can put them in a much bigger pot on your patio, or you could put them in the ground directly if you have got to the ground, just follow the basic principles I'm going to show. If you're not a gardener and you haven't got those types of containers, don't worry. Anything like this, this one I think had grapes or strawberries in it. Any kind of plastic container, any container that has holes in the bottom, the holes are really important for drainage. All plants need moisture, but if they sit in water, the air can't get to their roots and they will drown. It's a very common way of killing house plants. So something like that, or you can make holes in the bottom of something like this old hummus container. I'm going to use the small plant pot just for ease of demonstration. So once you've got your seeds and you've got your container to grow them in, you need your compost. So what I have here is lovely, soft, fluffy, peat-free compost. Not something that everybody has lying around the house, but it is possible to order it online and have it delivered to your door. If you do that, I would strongly advise you to spend the extra money and buy peat-free for environmental reasons, but also because with compost you do get what you pay for. Um, if all you can get hold of is the cheap stuff, then it's fine for growing pea shoes. So, let's get started. Here's my, my plant pot, and what I'm going to do is just fill it about half full, a little bit of a shake. Fill it down very, very gently. You don't need to squash it down hard, just so that all your peas are in a nice level there and they'll all come up together. So as you can see, it's about half full. And then I'm going to take these, these I put them in a pot, so I'm not putting my dirty compost hands in the cooking peas. You can be really generous with your sowing of these seeds. Just sprinkle them on the top. If you were growing these to get more seed, more peas, you'd have to spread them out um, so that the plants were not in competition. However, these plants are only going to be growing for the first few weeks, weeks of their life before you eat them. So you can put them really quite thickly. You see, I've covered the surface, just a single layer. Probably even get a few more in there like that. Be really generous with that and you will get more pea shoots. Once you've done that, you need to cover them up. So a bit more compost, like that. Just level it off slightly. And you'll notice that I have left 
a gap of about a centimeter at the top that's quite important because peas are really strong shoots after about a week you will find that they will break through the compost surface and they will lift the whole surface of the compost up and because they're so close together you might even just get it as a cap um, if you haven't given them space to do that you'll end up with your compost all over your windowsill which is a bit annoying so once you've done that all you need to do you put in a little tray to catch the water as it goes through or if you don't have um, a, a tray specially bought like that maybe a good alternative something like this mushroom container I'll use that now um, and then water them in really well just normal tap water what you're doing here is is soaking the peas so that they'll absorb the moisture and start germinating growing that's lovely. At this point, all you have to do then is to put these pea, pea shoots um, on uh, the sunniest windowsill that you can find and leave them. Over the next um, couple of weeks, just check them each day to make sure that the compost is still moist. As I say, you don't want it really wet or the plants will drown because they can't get any air to the roots. So a tip for checking compost is if you put your finger down in the compost to the first digit and you can't feel any moisture, then they need watering. If not, leave them well alone. You only want the compost to be damp. And it's a good idea as well to water from the base. So we'll pour your water into the container from here on and then the compost will suck it up through capillary action. So put those on your windowsill and watch them grow. Truly Peter fashion, here's some I grew earlier. These are in a much bigger container, you can see. These are about two weeks old and you can just see how dense they are, how lush and how green. And they've also got these little tendrils on the top, which are quite fun, particularly if you've got children. They tend to like those. That's what the plant uses to climb up um, as, it, as it gets bigger. You could eat them at that stage. However, you only get one serving. So here is another pot that I grew three or four weeks ago now you can see I'm much bigger a bush you put my hand so you can get a sense of the scale and what I've done is I have cut them off on this side and we've eaten them in the salad and these ones are ready to eat the part that you want for eating with is the very top shoot you can feel it that it's still very soft and fleshy and juicy and you can just snap it off the plant like that there you go um, they taste of uh, fresh green peas, they're absolutely delicious. Don't eat the part at the bottom because that starts to get very woody, it's not very nice. But if you leave a couple of, joy of leaves at the base here, as you can see there are still leaves on the bottom, these will shoot again from the point at which the leaf reaches the stem. And you can get two, sometimes three or four crops from one pot before the plants have used up all the nutrition in the compost and then they tend to slow down and go a bit yellow and die. When that happens, just put them on your compost heap or in your, your uh, garden waste bin. So there you go. Pea shoot salads on the windowsill or pennies. So now we've seen just how easy it is to grow nutritious and tasty salads on your own windowsill. Um, just using marifat peas, we can apply that to other seeds that you might have in your cupboard and grow what in a fancy restaurant you might call microgreens, which are just the small seedlings that you eat before they grow into the full size plant so that they are very quick. You may already have done this as a child, I don't know how many of them you will have grown uh, mustard and cress and this is something that can be done even without compost. You eat the plants at such a young stage that they have no need of nutrients in the compost so that you can grow them simply on a layer of folded wet kitchen towel or wet cotton wool um, in the bottom of a, a container like this one. And then you just cut them when they're about that height and eat them in your salads, sandwiches, whatever. So now I am going to grow some other microgreens. The seeds that I have are alfalfa, but you could also use fenugreek. Fenugreek um, is a seed that's more commonly used in curries and spices, but it makes a really nice, tasty, slightly curry flavored microgreen, um, really delicious. So as we've done before, 
get your container, make sure that it's got drainage holes in the bottom. A little compost. Shake it flat like that and just very gently with the back of your knuckles press it down. You don't need a great depth of compost for microgreens so don't waste your compost. I've probably only got just over a centimetre in there. You want it nice and flat so all the seeds are at the same level and will come up at the same time. These are very very tiny seeds, these alfalfa. So in this it's quite different from the pea shoots which are quite chunky ones. We planted the peas about a pea's depth underneath the compost. If you did that to these tiny little ones by the time they reach the light they would be exhausted. So what you're going to do is just sprinkle them quite thickly again all over the surface of the compost. Like that. And instead of putting a thick layer of compost on the top, just take a little bit that's already fluffed up and sprinkle it over the top just so you can no longer see the seeds. Doesn't matter if one or two of them are still showing because they will still grow. Some seeds are so small that you don't even cover them. Generally, those are ones that need light to germinate. There we go. Now, another difference here with the watering when you've got such fine seeds, you need to use either um, a watering can which has a fine rose to make a very fine rain effect over the surface or if you haven't got that put them in another container to hold the water and then just water them down the side and that water will be drawn up through the compost and will moisten the seeds and again you just put it on a warm windowsill sunny windowsill and leave it until it has grown usually about an inch, two inches high, while the leaves are still very young and tender. And there you have your own microgreens.